many decades now, there's been a lot of work on developing a vaccine for malaria. And most of the vaccines that have been tried using a single protein for malaria to inoculate uh, patients with have um, been overall relatively disappointing. There's been some limited success here and there, and there's um, some promising results from a vaccine called RTSS from GlaxoSmithKline. But the history of malaria vaccinology has not been one of great success. You know, this parasite has clearly evolved to be an immune system escape artist and employs a broad number of uh, tricks, including antigenic variation, that is switching the antigens it presents to the host, to avoid the host immune system. That's its main job for survival. So it's no surprise that the simplistic of approach of just giving it a single malarial protein or antigen hasn't worked that well. There is some very uh, interesting work in the past showing that attenuated parasites, irradiated sporozoites, for example, and so on, uh, potentially have very good protective value. Therefore, I think we're entering into a new era where we understand a little bit more about the parasite and the immune system and vaccinology, but we by no means have the critical information that we need. That is, we do not currently have a molecular correlate of protection. There's nothing that we can measure that I know of in a host that would predict whether it will be protected under challenge or not. And that's a key piece of information that we really do need. The next step is threefold. One, we want to learn more about the basic biology of the organelle. Two, we want to be able to develop therapeutics against it and use the fact that we can complement with IPP to get target-specific hits and high-throughput screening. And three, we want to explore the possibility that an attenuated vaccine could be built from this scaffold.